Hey y'all, it's Heal Heat time. Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and this is a Heal Heat Top 10. The topic of this Top 10, Top 10 Potential Surprises for the 2015 Royal Rumble. Now, this is very specific to this Royal Rumble. As you'll see, the Rumble will be held in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at the time of taping, just under about two weeks. So, the city plays a lot into the rankings on this. So, without any further ado, top 10 potential surprise entries into the Royal Rumble. Number 10, AJ Styles. Now, I consider this an extreme long shot for him to be there. The fact that he's very successful in New Japan, the fact that he's successful in the independence, the fact that he has success in Ring of Honor makes it that he doesn't need the WWE. And I don't necessarily think they want him. However, for a wrestling fan, who as a wrestling fan wouldn't we want to see a guy the caliber of AJ Styles in the WWE? adding something to their show. I know it's an extreme long shot, but hey, like I said, I could dream I'm a fan. I'd like to see what he could do there. Number nine, Yoshihiro Tajiri. Now, you'll start to see the theme, like I mentioned before I went into the top ten. A lot of these guys are going to have ties to the area. Tajiri being an ECW original, a guy that's ECW fans love, that WWE fans love, that's got worldwide fame and acumen. He's a guy that could probably be brought in, do a little spot, leave, get a nice pop from the crowd, in my opinion. I love Tajiri. I hope you guys do as well. Number eight, the Blue World Order. Whether it be Stevie, whether it be Blue Meanie, or even Nova, but I think Nova, from reports I've read, he doesn't want to wrestle anymore, which is cool. Have a good uh, career after wrestling. But it'd be cool to see maybe Stevie Richards coming out, entering the Rumble with Blue, Blue Mini with him as the Blue World Order, or vice versa. I think it would be a, a decent pop again, going back to the Philadelphia tie. I think they would work well, as those guys, kind of like the Road Dog has done in the past and others have done where they brought a guy in just kind of almost for comedy level. Which puts us to our number seven guy. This is purely for historical reasons and purely again for one of those cool moments that you hardly ever see. The Honky Tonk Man. Last time we seen him entered in the Royal Rumble, Kane got rid of him pretty quickly. Why not have him repeat the process with a guy like Roman Reigns who seems to be one of the front runners to win the Royal Rumble, or, you know, maybe somebody else like a Rusev, Ryback, someone, Luke Harper, that they're trying to build, someone that they could give that highlight real moment of taking out the Honky Tonk Man. I don't know, I, I like Honky Tonk Man, I'd just love to see him in there again. Use him like they did when they used him to get Kane over. Number six. The current NXT World Champion, Sami Zayn. Now, last year, and I believe the year before, they had one guy from NXT in the Rumble. Last year it was Rusev, the year before it was Bo Dallas. I think they could go with a similar thing, and the guy that's most synonymous at this point with NXT is Sami Zayn. I think he has a decent enough following. His ties were Ring of Honor, being as that Ring of Honor ran a lot of shows in and around the Philadelphia area, I think will give some of the more hardcore fans someone to cheer for. I think it'd be cool. I think it'd be, like I said, it'd be an awesome thing. Most likely they're going to use one of the NXT guys in the Rumble. Why not make it the champion? Number five, the Sandman. Along the lines of the Honky Tonk Man and the Blue World Order, this is more of a, a cool spot to see someone that you wouldn't think would be there. I mean, he's a guy, he's synonymous with ECW. 
He's beloved in Philadelphia. I believe he still lives in the area. He's a guy that could come out, pop the crowd, do a couple minute spot when there's a lull in the match, and leave. And I think it would be a very cool thing to see the Sandman in this year's Royal Rumble. Just for those reasons. He could be someone, again, pop the crowd when it's in a little bit of a dead area. Maybe after a run of a lot of eliminations, out comes the Sandman. Just have fun. Our number four guy. Now this one, there's actually some good thought behind it. Many of you know, and hopefully I'm not breaking too far of the kayfabe or the fourth wall or whatever you want to hear call it for you guys. Many of you know that Bo Dallas and Bray Wyatt are brothers. And if you don't, I'm sorry that I spoiled it for you. Well, you also may know who their father is, Mike Rotunda, a.k.a. IRS. Our number four guy would be IRS. I'd bring him in in the IRS gimmick. I'd have it at a point where Bo Dallas and Bray Wyatt are the only two in the Rumble, getting you that little special moment for a second. The way I would do it is I'd have to where they're the two left in the ring, they square off, look at each other. You feel that special moment, brother against brother, kind of unsaid. And all of a sudden, the next entrance comes out, and it's IRS. So you have brother versus brother versus father. For just another one of those cool little moments that only the Royal Rumble could do, just for that, I purely think Ray, or IRS would be a great guy to bring in at that spot. Number three guy is a guy I just almost said instead of IRS. was reading ahead on my notes, of course. Razor Ramon. And no, I'm not talking about Scott Hall. I'm talking about as Razor Ramon. We've seen Kevin Nash do it as Diesel. Worked well. I think Razor deserves that one more shot. The Royal Rumble's a spot where you don't have to be in there 30 minutes to make an impact. A two, three minute appearance from Razor Ramon and the fans will eat it up. There's a lot of people that are Scott Hall, a.k.a. Razor Ramon fans, and I think they would love just seeing him in there. Our number two is going to be a pair of guys. In my opinion, the greatest tag team in the history of professional wrestling. That's right, Bubba Ray and Devon, the Dudley Boys. Now, you could do it either way. You could use two spots on them. You could have one or the other come. Or you could do, like I said, with the BWO, have one accompany the other to the ring. Personally, I'd love to see the Dudley Boys back in the WWE. I think they've done all they could do in TNA. I'd like to see them against some of New Japan's top tag teams and some of Ring of Honor's tag team, top tag teams, specifically teams like Red Dragon and the Time Splitters, the Killer Elite Squad, which they did a little bit with at House of Hardcore, but I'd like to see something more of that. Um, I'd like to see them go up against Doc Gallows and Machine Gun Anderson. I think that would be a great match. There's matches out there on the indie scene that I would love to see them have. Them versus the Briscoe Brothers I think would be amazing. But I'd also love to see the Dudley Boys come back and bring, bring life into a tag division that's a little bit stagnant. They injected the Ascension. It's not going over so well, mostly because of the way that they're portraying them. However, you got some good tag teams there. You got the Usos are very good. They're just stale because you're tired of seeing the people they match up with because they match up with the same people all the time. You inject the Dudley Boys, you got the Uso Brothers, you got the Ascension, who hopefully they turn around and make them proper. You got Miz and Mizdow, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro, Cody and Goldust. There's a nice little faction going around there, or a nice little division that could be built with the Dudley Boys' help, in my opinion. Now, coming off of that, if you've seen one of our top tens here before, before we get to number one, we do a little thing called the best of the rest. Now, basically, these are guys that were considered for the, for the countdown, but 
for one reason or other, just didn't make it. First off, Rhino. The last ECW, actual ECW champion in the, e the town of ECW, kind of writes itself, guys. And I for failed to mention that with the Dudleys, of course, they're ECW legends, but they're just legends as well. One of the most popular teams ever. But anyway, I digress. Back to Rhino. A great guy. Again, he's one of those guys you can bring in. He doesn't have to be in there 20 minutes. He can be in there 3, 4, 5 minutes. Give you a little spot. Spear somebody like a Fandango. Knock him out of the ring. Get his comeuppance from somebody else. Like a Rusev. Used, use his fame to put somebody else over. Now, our next guy is purely for the way that they've been booking the Ascension. And if you've seen what they've been saying on the microphones, they're talking bad about the powers of pain and demolition, and last but not least, the Road Warriors. I think, in my opinion, it would be awesome to see Road Warrior Animal come out. He'd get a huge pop from the crowd first. If the Ascension's in the ring, he could run a beeline right to them. They could either eliminate him, or he could eliminate one of them, either way, enhancing what they're saying about being better than the Road Warriors. And last but not least on our best of the rest, kind of similar to what I said with Razor Ramon, that would be the 123 Kid, a.k.a. Sean Waltman, who's known as Six, X-Pac, and the Kid. I think as a 123 Kid gimmick, it would work well. Again, much like the Razor Ramon thing, much like the Honky Tonk Man thing, you get that little spot. We've seen him use a 123 gimmick, 123 Kid gimmick in Chikara, which is a local federation that runs in the Philadelphia area. So there is some of that tying in. There is a nostalgia factor. A lot of the guys my age and a little bit younger grew up watching the 123 Kid or have heard of the 123 Kid. So it would make it a little bit, make it a cool little spot, in my opinion. Now, before we go on to number one, if there's anyone you think we left off the list, someone we ranked up too high, someone we ranked up too low, just plain out forgot them all together. Let us know what you think. Hit us up on Facebook, hit us up on Twitter, put your comments right down there in the comment box. And while you're at it, Share us and like us, because that's the way we get more views. The more you share us, the more other people watch. The more you like us, the more YouTube will promote us. It's weird how that works. They promote the stuff that's liked the most. Who knew? So let, hit share and like if you appreciate what we do. Spread it out there for everybody else to share. Now last but not least, our number one potential surprise entrant for this year's Royal Rumble, the backbone, the heart and soul of ECW, Tommy Dreamer. There is not one man in the wrestling world that has given more to the to legacy of ECW, to what ECW meant, that's more synonymous with the style, with the sacrifice with everything there was than Tommy Dreamer. I mean, you got guys like Sandman, Sabu, Rob Van Dam, the Dudley Boys, Raven. All these guys are great. All these guys are great ambassadors for what ECW meant. But no one meant more to ECW than Tommy Dreamer. He's a guy that's universally loved. All the fans love him. He's an ECW icon. You're in the home of ECW. Bring the guy out. Let him get that one more monster ovation that he deserves for all the years he's busted his ass for all of us fans. Bring him out there. Let's see him in there for a few minutes. Let him get the ovation he deserved in the city that pretty much made his career and made a bunch of these guys' careers and they also brought a style of wrestling that changed the landscape of professional wrestling. Bring Tommy Dreamer out. 
in my opinion, the best surprise they can do. But basically, that's all I have to say about that. My name is George Coles, and this has been another Heel Heat Top 10.